Why, hello there and welcome to a brand new week on Afternoon Express. My name is Danilo Acquisto. You must be absolutely exhausted after a crazy weekend filled with so much sporting action last night. I swear I got so many WhatsApps and tweets and things that came through uh, in the new day already with everyone celebrating all those crazy achievements and awards and wins. But I hope you're still with us. I hope you're awake and ready for a brand new week on Afternoon Express. We're kicking it off today on this Motivational Monday. Bonnie's going to be chatting to an incredible man. His name is Sizwe Ngasana. This man started a, a really cool initiative. It's called Future Nation Schools. The idea here is to create private school education quality but at affordable prices for those middle to lower income families families who can't afford quality education. It should be absolutely fascinating. And I'm super excited because today it's finally time for our design contestants on Winner Home on Afternoon Express to be judged on their master bedrooms. We'll have to see who came out on top and I can say there is going to be a slight twist. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Also, I know uh, Jeannie's looking very, very excited to be in the kitchen today wearing her national colors. <laughs> I know, it's just unfortunate that Portugal's national colors are in fact maroon. But can we just take a moment to discuss the soccer last night? I mean, that was absolutely amazing. I realised that I am not emotionally mature enough to see Cristiano Ronaldo cry. And then a moth came to kiss him on the face when, when he was crying, when he was kicked off the field. And I've never wanted to be a moth so badly in my life. So congratulations, Portugal. That was an absolutely great game. Now, today I'm going to be in the kitchen with the wonderful Megan Daniels. And we're going to be whipping up something... I can't even tell by the ingredients what we're making. So what are Something we doing? Something very delicious. We're going to basically do a braised chicken dish with celeriac and potato mashed potato. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Should we actually just get started with it now? Yes, definitely. Because I'm feeling a little hungry. <laughs> well, this is the perfect one pot wonder, so. Okay. We've got our chicken in here, which we actually started um, browning, which you can see over here. Yeah. So that's the secret to any good braise. So braising is basically to fry it lightly, and then to just kind of put liquid with it and then let it simmer and do its thing. Oh, okay, so what are you doing now? You're basically sealing it, is that yes. right? Yes, okay. letting out all the flavorful juices. You could use any cut of chicken here, yeah. leg, thigh, whatever, but thighs definitely have a lot of meaty flavor. Yeah, the thighs are always my best. Yeah. But now why do you have to seal it? Um, it's not specifically sealing it, it's more like just to, if you're getting this color on the side, yeah. that's always good for a good stew. Because if you're going in and then you eat the skin from the yeah. stew, you want it to have that nice color, Flavor. that char, that everything. If you're eating skin that hasn't been, you know, fried off, not okay. that great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we've got that going. Then we're going to start with our braising liquid. So while this is doing its thing like yes. this, we're going to go with our Worcester sauce. Okay. Our soy sauce. Mm -hmm. We've got some cumin. Don't be afraid of the cumin. It's very, very, very aromatic dish. Yeah, you throw through quite a bit in there. <laughs> you'll, you'll taste why later. Okay, We've great. got some ginger and chilli. Some sweet chilli sauce. Mm -hmm. Just for that delicious flavour. So you can already smell. It's absolutely yeah. delicious. We've got some finely diced red onion. Yeah. And some barbecue sauce. For that richness Love. as well. Great. Okay, so from here, um, and then some water at the end, please. Yeah, I'll bring that for you. Cool, so I'm just going to mix this all together. And I just pour. Yeah, go for it. Because I'm a pourer. <laughs> <laughs> the Portuguese <laughs> jokes haven't stopped all day. <laughs> there we go, perfect. So I'm going to add that to the chicken like that. Okay. So you can see, now we've added the braising liquid. And you can hear that that's the, the perfect sound that you're exactly. wanting to get. And turn this over so now the other side can go. So you can see, now that we've done the skin, what it's doing to the actual chip. I mean, that's exactly. beautiful Looks color. amazing already. There we go. So we let this go for around 45 minutes to an hour. And then we've got this lovely one Ta -da! over here. Ta-da! The magic of TV. <laughs> we've already got one made. So basically, it's okay, just... Well, let's, let me swap the parts and yeah, bring our freshly cooked one over there. So I'll take Maybe that one. You. Look at me already a Maria in the <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Perfect. So basically, oh, we've um, reduced delish. it by two thirds. So that just intensifies the flavor. It just makes us have a gravy, basically. So it's one pot wonder, all in one. Exactly. Then we then go over to our side. So here we've got celeriac um, vegetable, yeah. which I think is a guilt-free potato, I would say. It's got less starch oh, in it. <laughs> it basically does look like a peeled eggplant, though, just it from the outside. It also actually tastes a bit like sweet potato. Okay. So it's a really, really good, it's quite like a, um, I want to say like a parsnip, it's got that kind of flavor. Nice. So it's perfect for this kind of dish. So we've already chopped it up over here. So it's a really rough chop, yeah. as you can see. Just like that, and we're gonna season it. And I mean, what 
Is it? Like, if it's, if it's a guilt-free potato, then Not I'm guessing it doesn't value, have the carb. I mean, it does have the carb value, but it's almost as if you would do a carrot mashed potato or okay, a sweet so potato. So it's vegetable content, yes, yeah, mainly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's so it's good for you. It's really, really good for you. But you'll taste the flavour later. It's a really, really good flavour. And then we've got some olive oil, which you're just going to throw over it. Don't be afraid to just get in there like this. Yeah, I'm, I think the more olive oil, the better. <laughs> I'm one of those people that has olive oil on everything. Well, olive oil is good for everything. Your yeah. hair, your skin, everything, I suppose. So then from this, we're going to pop it into the oven mm -hmm. for um, at 180 for about 20 to 30 minutes. And then we've got this. So again, again. half of tea, I suppose. So wait until it's completely tender inside and then charred on the outside, as you can see here. Mm -hmm. So we've already started to mash it. So you can see what it's doing. So it's almost like a bit of a crushed potato. Yeah. So even with all of my mashed potatoes, I've always got a little bit of lumps through it because I feel like the more you go, you know, the more you mix a mashed potato, the more like starchy, the more it just becomes very exactly. Not well, you don't that want great. it so silky smooth like that. That remember that packet potato like a smash, puree, smash I think, kind of thing. Not, yeah. not smash, you want yeah. it to, to actually feel like a vegetable. There we go. So it's basically we'll just do it like this, and then we'll stir it through our already done potatoes. So it will just give us that flavour, right? Just do it like this. So it's going to, to flavour the potatoes like yeah, a celery. Like, okay, like give it a more vegetable-y vibe. There we go. So instead of just normal boring mashed potato, if you want to mix it up, we've completely got something like Great. this for you. So then we can play it up. Amazing. So over here, I'm just going to do it. This is real like harvest style. I mean, you want yeah, to... Less love... dishes, the better, I suppose. So over here. And it's so wholesome, especially for a wintry evening. There we go. <laughs> it's perfect for as a winter's dish, except if you live in Cape Town and then you just <laughs> need summer salads for the winter that That's they're true. having at the it's moment. That's true, it's up and down completely. <laughs> so here we go, and then I'm going to bring that over the side. And this is going to be nice and warm That's as well. That's going to be out. So in here, I'm just going to lift this up just Oh, like that this. gravy is going to be outstanding on those potatoes. So also, now that the celeriac and the potatoes are together, look at that gravy, that's so thick. Oh, no, that's just a joke. <laughs> it's so good. This is honestly the perfect, mm. perfect meal to have just like that. A lot of gravy. And then can I take the heat off? Yeah, of course. Here go. Oh, wow, that looks delicious. I mean, how easy was that, though? <laughs> <laughs> That is a beautiful, wholesome dinner. Remember, you can have this for dinner as well. All you need to do is visit our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, and there you can get all of our list of ingredients and recipes, and all of the recipes that we've had over the time of the show. I Yum, can just thank say, you. I heard Jeannie say just now that because you were pouring liquid that you were a pourer, if I were doing the dicing, I'd be a chop. I'd be a chop. <laughs> all right, right? I, I can't even come to <laughs> Off the red right no to words. Afternoon Express, we're going to be chatting to Cesar and my son. Uh, Bonnie's on standby to have that incredible interview. This man is trying to make uh, public education, well, no, private education, more affordable to those medium to lower class income uh, families. So make sure you stay tuned for that. We'll see you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. Future Nation Schools, a subsidiary of the Sefiso Learning Group, is a new model of education that is futuristic, technology-enabled, and epitomizes African excellence. Their vision is to build a network of private schools across South Africa and the rest of Africa that offer world-class education at an affordable price. We're joined now by the man behind it all, founder of Sefiso Learning Group, Sizwe Nlasan. Welcome to the love, Sizwe. Thank you. Lovely to have you with us. Good. So you began, you started the first black audit firm in Guazulu Natal called Sizwe & Co. How did your journey with education play a role in your eventual success? Well, you know, way back then when we started uh, Sizwe & Company, I was involved in education as an activist as well as really just making sure that other people had the kind of opportunities that I had. Mm. So one of the founders of the Association of Black Accountants, Abasa, way back then, I was a lecturer, lecturing accounting, tax and auditing. And uh, my dad was a school teacher. So, you know, mm. I guess at home there were always books and he was always doing uh, marking and whatever you. So I sort of grew up in that kind of environment, which is why I've always been involved, even when I was in corporates, uh, I was always involved in the foundations that were mm. particularly involved in education. Right. And how were you able to run such a successful audit firm at a time when the country was politically hostile? Socially well, hostile. It was really tough in the beginning, you know, because as black audit firms, we really didn't have audits, so we were bookkeepers. Mm. 
So we wrote books mm. for doctors and lawyers and so on. But from 1992, things started to change when obviously there were negotiations around the new democratic country and the new democratic government. And that's where we got a really good break because um, we started doing state-owned companies, government departments, the Auditor General was giving us work, and slowly the private sector started to give us work. Wow. Yeah, and then you eventually moved away from corporate to do more social entrepreneurship work and youth development. What led you to that decision? Well, I've spent a lot of time in corporate life, but I was always involved in education mm -hmm. because I yeah. believe I'm, I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for education. So it is in this regard that we've decided after I retired from the bank uh, that this is what I'm going to do full time wow. now. Wow. And tell us about Future Nation School. What's the ethos? And the ethos of Future Nation School is to create a model of schooling which is the best in terms of what you look at in terms of education or schools in the world, mm -hmm. but at the same time, as you indicated earlier, offers access and affordability. And what we want to do here is to focus and differentiate ourselves in a number of areas. We want to make sure that, for instance, we're training our children on entrepreneurship and leadership, uh, we focus on African studies, mm -hmm. uh, we focus on excellence because it's excellence uh, that really drives the success that we see in areas where there's success. Yeah. And it is also important that at the end of the day, uh, we build children that make a contribution to society, whether they, they're employers or they go and work in corporate life, it doesn't really matter what they do, who are proud about themselves and they are about their origins, that they're African yeah. and therefore they can be just as good. There's nothing in the DNA of our children in Africa that makes them less than a child yeah. in the Silicon Valley or in Japan or right. in China. Right. Now, I mean, even as an experienced mother myself, I know that affordability and private school don't usually go in the same sentence in South Africa. Tell us what, what makes a future nation school affordable and what well, do you mean by that? We will offer a range of price points depending on where our schools are. The academic model, in other words, what the children get from school will be the same. Whether the school is in an upper income suburb or an affordable housing mm -hmm. you know, development. The differentiate in terms of pricing will be the kind of extramural activities that are offered to that school. Right. So affordability, of course, is a relative term because our price range will be from 1,500 to about 4,500 uh, rand a month, right. depending on where the school is. But as I was saying, the quality will be exactly the same, the same in all of those schools. Yeah. And will there be school uniforms? What's kind of like the social atmosphere that you're trying to create? Well, we're creating an, an atmosphere of fun. Uh, because it is important that you know children experience a fun environment at school. Yeah. This they work hard and you so on. You want happy children. You want happy yeah. children. So what we've done actually, we don't have uniform. We have school gear. So because one of the key aspects that we want to emphasize is individuality. Hmm. You know, you are Bonnie, I'm Cizwe, and therefore we have different interests. So within a, we have a spectrum of school gear where you can mix and match. It's comfortable. It is chinos. It is you know t-shirts, uh, and therefore, and it's hoodies, for instance, in winter, mm. you know, we'll have hoodies and so on. So that, you know, children can be children at school. We're yeah. not trying to make sort of small men that wear ties yeah. at school. <laughs> or girls that wear, you know, sort of stiff uniform yeah. and so on. Uh, so that's a kind of ethos. The ethos of fun, of individuality, of excellence is really mm -hmm, important. Mm -hmm. So we all know that technology is gonna play a big role in skills development throughout Africa. What has Future Nation School done to ensure that children are equipped with the best technological and efficient skills possible? Well, a couple of things. Uh, Swiss Learning Group has created Swiss Education Technology. So we actually, we're developing our own solutions internally. Of course, there's oh. solutions that you can buy and so on, but it is particularly important, especially the focus on African excellence and so on, that we're developing, for instance, material, that we're developing imagery, we're developing content that is an African character. That's why, I mean, we're developing uh, technology internally. So we have programmers, we have people who are doing gaming. One mm. of the things, for instance, that we're gonna offer at our schools is eSports. eSports that where you, you game, in other words, you play sports using, you know, for instance, you know, wow. children sit on consoles mm -hmm. and so on, but there's an education component in it. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it is important that, you know, as you correctly say, that our children are exposed to the best technology that's out there. One of the things that we've done, we are collaborating with a chain of schools in California, in San Diego, you know, that 
uh, called High Tech High. So we bring mm -hmm. some of the technology from there. Our teachers actually have just been back from uh, California, from San wow. Diego, where they got some training on how to use some of these things. Yeah. But as I was saying, we're going to customize and develop our own solutions as well. Yeah. Speaking of teachers, in terms of your staff, what do you require from your staff? What are the qualifications and requirements that are essential to, to creating, essentially, you're going to need a really unique hmm. staff at your yeah. school? Well, uh, pedagogy, in other words, our education and learning model is based on what we call project-based learning. In other words, when a child does mathematics or science or English or history or geography, they actually, as part of learning process, do self-discovery, they do projects. Uh, that essentially means that uh, the kind of teachers that we need are teachers that have real life experience. So we have teachers, young and old, mm -hmm. uh, that have worked elsewhere outside of the education system. Obviously, there must be qualified teachers yes. uh, because it is important for them to understand the other world so that we're linking the dots of mm. education, what we call educonomy. Wow. Uh, so that's one of the key differentiators. And one of the things, I'm involved in public education, strengthening public education systems. Mm -hmm. So I chair the National Education Collaboration Trust. It is important to continue to strengthen the public education system. And in that regard, most of our teachers come from private schools or otherwise they are people who were teachers before but are now in the private sector right. working in companies and so on. Right. So your school officially opens next year, but you have an accelerated winter program. What is that? An accelerated uh, program is is essentially a program that we're starting on Tuesday okay. uh, to offer to children, especially grade R1 and 2 and grade 6, 7 and 8, mm -hmm. where during the school holidays they'll come and experience our model. They'll come and, you know, play with robotics. Uh, they, there's gamification which they'll be exposed to. They'll do projects. Uh, really just to expose them to this fun way of wow. learning and teaching. Yeah, that's incredible. How many spots are available and what do you look for in, in, in children who are applying at your school? Well, children, we, we really don't distinguish and discriminate in terms of what kind of children, as long as uh, the parents, you know, would like to expose their children to our model and they can afford to pay the kind of fees. Like, for instance, for the accelerated program, we're charging 200 rand for two weeks. And, and therefore, you know, anyone is welcome to bring their children. Yeah. It doesn't really matter where they, they go, which school they go to and so on. Yeah. And will you be opening up nationally or are you yes. just doing it per province for now? Oh, for now, we're starting in Gauteng. Mm -hmm. uh, but clearly what we want to do uh, is to roll out our model throughout the country. In fact, we have ambitions to go through the continent as well. Wow. Well, I can't wait to see and hear more about your school. I'll, I'll definitely be putting up a applying for a spot for my kids. <laughs> yeah, you can visit www.fishernationschool.com. Okay. And that's where you'll see a little bit more. You can learn a little bit more about okay. what we do. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. And all the details are available on our website. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. All the best. Thanks. You know, when a man wears red soles in our loft, you know he loves us. <laughs> Thank you for an amazing interview, Siswe. Coming up after the break, we're going to be with my wonderful friend and the most amazing dietitian, Kelly Schroeder, and we're going to be teaching you how to mix up a little smoothie bowl with Nutribullet. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, smoothie bowls have become all the rage, from health enthusiasts to those of us addicted to posting all of our food on Instagram. <laughs> Not only are they visually beautiful to look at and delicious, but they're really something different and offer a modern twist to a healthy treat. So today, we're putting our own spin on it and making a Nutri-Blast bowl. Joining us in the loft this afternoon is the lovely Kelly Schroeder. Welcome. Good afternoon, Jeannie. OK, so I know we've discussed this to the nth end, but mm -hmm. I, like, Every time I want to go on a diet, which is every five minutes, <laughs> um, people say stay away from too much sweet uh, yeah. and especially too much fruit. Yes. But like a Nutri Blast bowl, I think sounds like a really good option for mm. breakfast. Yeah, so when you say don't eat too much fruit, what you're really aiming for there is not eating too much fruit all in one go because it is a source okay. of car carbohydrates. So okay. All carbohydrates, when you digest them, you metabolize them, they end up in your blood as blood sugar, blood glucose. Yeah. So what you're trying to prevent is big blood glucose spikes. Okay? Okay, okay. So that's not to say that fruit is unhealthy. You do want yeah. to eat some fruit, but you want to maybe just manage how much you're eating all in one go. Yeah. That's why using a Nutribullet and mixing vegetables in with your fruit is such a great idea, rather than okay. just eating a big bowl of fruit salad. 
you're eating some fruit and some veggies. Okay, and I think this is such an amazing idea because when you have a Nutri Blast or a smoothie, I think you're drinking it, so mentally you don't realize, you don't feel like you're actually eating something. That's my thing with yeah, this I have to thing. eat. I like, I like a spoon sometimes, I like to feel like I'm chewing on something yes. and doing it in a bowl. I mean, I think it's mostly psychological, but it really yeah. works for me sometimes. Well, because then you'd order a smoothie and then a salad, where actually the... the <laughs> you just need one. <laughs> yeah, exactly, only have one of them. Okay, so let's get making our little, right. our little Nutri Blast bowl. Okay, I'm going to pass things to you. Yeah. When I suppose we, we blast it for a little lot less than what we would You know what I suggest is actually smoothie. just adding a little bit less liquid so you can blast it just as long. So oh, you're really yes. blending up the nutrients, but okay. you're adding just a little bit less liquid. So let's okay. see how we go. So what we've done, we've frozen the berries and the banana. There's a half oh, a banana great. there, not a whole one. Okay. Not too many carbs all in one go. Lots okay. of berries, which are really healthy. And, lots and berries, you can, you can kind of have an unlimited amount. They're well, really good. I mean, to, yeah, to a point. I mean, I think they're <laughs> sort of self-limiting. <laughs> okay. But they're really healthy, full of antioxidants. They're okay. a great nutrient. Spinach, they're my vegetables for this one. Okay. Was, and spinach, the flavor's not ever really overbearing, so it doesn't no, feel like these veggies. baby spinach is really quite neutral, and it's a really nutritious vegetable. Okay, let's throw that in there. Got enough there, okay. These are almonds, so that's a lovely source of protein, and also some iron and a bit of calcium. Okay. This is coconut oil. So coconut oil is a nice antibacterial fat. Okay. And the reason why I like to add a bit of fat to something like this is that it's satisfying. So you could also add some flaxseed oil or even some avocado. Yeah. There are lots of different really healthy sources of fat okay. that you could add, but I really recommend adding some protein, some fat. That's where the almonds are. And that's going to keep you fuller for longer. Mm, exactly. Okay. So it's not just carbs. Yeah. And that's chia seed. I found chia seeds also makes me quite full. Mm. If they, I have chia they actually seeds, swell up, they absorb liquid and they swell up, so they're really, really good for your digestive system. Yeah, and they're I a love good source those. of omega-3 fatty acids. Amazing. And almond milk. Okay. So this is an unsweetened almond milk and I always advise to look for a calcium fortified one because if you're substituting normal milk for something else, it's a good idea to have some calcium in there. Okay. There we go. That's great. <laughs> we need some calcium. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's blast this now. Okay. And this is really so easy to make and the fact that now you can, I suppose, chew it like in a bowl form, means it's going to be much... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm already blending, I'm like blasting it too much. Yeah. No, it's fine, it's fine. Good. Okay. Good to go. I don't want to blast too much. And then what's fun with this is that you can put all sorts of little toppings on it. So you could put chopped nuts or even toasted flaked almonds. Okay. Or... Is your one for you? Thank you. Okay, I think I may have blasted it for a little bit too long or put in too much almond milk. Mm, maybe. It's quite nice when it's thick. Anyway. Yeah. Now I know for next time. For tomorrow morning, my berries breaking. on yours. Okay. There we go. Okay. Look how Let's beautiful see. that is. <laughs> Let's see if this is going to be my new answer to breakfast. Mmm. Mm. Yes. Oh, that's delicious. That's really, really great. And the almonds, actually. I'm tasting a lot of the almonds in that. Oh. I could do that. I could do that for breakfast. Yay! I've got a new breakfast. Uh, don't you find that you get bored of it if you have the same thing all the time? So this is absolutely amazing. Thank you for showing me this. Thank you My for new favourite breakfast. Now, we had so much fun today, and you can too. All you need to do is log on to NutriBullet.co.today and discover more recipes to enjoy and have fun with in your healthy life. Somebody who really, really will enjoy this as well as Danilo. I will indeed, but something that our contestants are definitely not going to enjoy is what's coming up after the break, or they, maybe they would as we get into our judging for their master bedrooms. They're here, our judges are here, and you better not change that dial or move from that seat. The tension is about to get started. We'll see you after this. Win a home on Afternoon Express, where three design contestants are turning three empty properties at Valdivia Estate State in the Cape Winelands into dream homes using finishes provided by Caesar Stone and Plascon. Vote for your favourite and you could win. Welcome back. Time definitely seems to be flying and I cannot believe that our three Winner Home Design contestants have already completed their master bedrooms. Today we have our contestants Joanne, Milentle and Rudolf with us in the loft. Welcome back guys. Thank you. Tension. You are always got the most interesting things to say. How are you feeling? 
Um, I'm feeling good. I hope they feel good about it. Yeah. What I've done. Well, they've already made up their <laughs> mind, so this schmoozing isn't going to help. Yeah. <laughs> Rudolf, how are you? Yeah, no, very well, thank you. Yeah, everything's okay. going great. You've won both of the previous challenges, so it's kind of yes. time for you to step up to the plate. Let's see if you can win a third in a row. It's tough. Will it be a hat trick or won't it? We're about to find out today. Uh, and Minente, how are you feeling, my friend? Um, I'm good, thanks. Um, just keen to get all the feedback. Um, <laughs> like the muscle bedroom was one of the exciting ones for me. Really? Mm. Cool. Yeah. So it was your favorite project to do. So we'll have to wait and see what our judges thought about that. Speaking of which, alongside them are our three judges, Simon Bray, CEO of Private Property, and Rizal Plascon's Global Colour Manager, and also John Case, Interior Architect and Director from Arc Interiors. It's good to have them with us in the loft today. All three of you, great to have you. But we need to get into our judging today, and I don't want to waste any more time, because every time this moment happens, you guys get so tense and everyone gets so excited about finding out whether the apartment that you guys have been voting for online has been the one that is also going to be one of our judges' winning apartments. So, let's start off, first of all, with Minente. Let's take a look at what he had planned for his master bedroom. A peaceful century, the space brings the outside inside using earthy colors from the timber flooring to the distressed wall feature headboard. This is complemented by the bold curtain and balanced off by the rest of the walls which are kept white and clean. While in the built-in cupboard, storage is maximized and its facade is used as a feature that makes the space seem bigger. The workspace is very minimal with black steel lines which add to the contemporary feel of the room. With a lot at stake for me, Nensle, uh, lots of things to prove, I guess, in some way. So, John, I'm going to let you get straight into it. What a beautiful bedroom. Yeah, no, no certainly. Um, I think I'm going to start with the things I liked a lot. Um, Nensle, I think your, your, your dressing room, I think, for me, was a big win. Mm. Um, the mirror doors definitely gave the room a much, much bigger feel, um, which I think was a, a, a great success. Uh, the second thing I really, really liked was you were bolder with color, um, and I think that was actually a, a nice touch. Um, a little bit risky but I definitely think it pulled off. Um, the, the, the other thing I thought, the four-poster bed did kind of hold quite nicely, although I did feel it was maybe a little bit flimsy. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I liked was the timber floors. I think that was also a nice touch. Um, overall, the, the, I think the only thing I didn't really like that much was the, the bedside tables, the brackets that were underneath them, I felt were a little flimsy. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you could have done a bit better on that, but overall, I think you did a great job. Cool, he's keeping his poker face on. Uh, what <laughs> score have you given him for that feedback? I gave him seven. A seven, that's a very high score. Happy? Yeah. Good, all right, Simon, over to you. Yeah, Manentle, first of all, excellent, uh, just overall design feel. I felt that you really came to the party this week uh, better than the challenges before, uh, and I felt you were really in the running this week more than you have been in the past. Things I really liked, well, the wardrobe, I mean, uh, we got to see a couple of the comments on the private property website. Uh, the woman loved the wardrobe. I think it definitely has a luxurious feel. Um, the room itself was also bold, as John said, some great use of color. Uh, loved the curtains. I thought that added texture and color to the room as well. I agree, though, the bed let us down a little bit. Uh, could have been sturdier, perhaps you know, some raw timber as opposed to the, the painted timber would have been better. But overall, excellent room. Mm, I saw you really enjoyed, I saw a big smile on your face when you saw the desk, you were like, this is a multifunctioning room, I can sell this. Yeah, I, I could have sat at that desk. <laughs> <laughs> so how much did you give him, what score did you give him for that? Seven and a half. Sure, slightly higher than John. Well, that's it, it's you, Anne. What is your feedback for Minentle and your score? Okay, well, Minentle, I was so glad you went, took a risk and you went for an impactful feature wall inspired by the environment. It was fantastic, I absolutely loved it. And um, it, made, it made such a statement in that room, so really well done on that. I also loved your use of color and texture, the curtains. You used linen, you used leather, you used all different types of texture, so well done on that. The only negatives I had were the bed color. I thought maybe it could have been a warmer color or perhaps even natural wood, and also the bedside tables. Okay. So I scored you, and. Eight. Wow, <laughs> the highest score so far today for me, Nentle. So that's great feedback. I see a smile on your face, big reactions. I'm excited. So we've got a seven from John, seven and a half from Simon, and an eight uh, from Anne. So let's move on to contestant number two, Rudolf, who has won previously both challenges, which I always say is not necessarily going to mean that he's got it off easy. This now means that he's got a lot still to prove. Is that the case, John? Most definitely, you know, I, I think... Um, <clears throat> oh, before, John, before I get your input, I just yes. want to interrupt you there quickly. We haven't even had a look at the, what his bedroom looked like. Let's take a look at his master bedroom before we get judging it. 
Inspired by fashion designer Ralph Lauren, his retail and lifestyle experiences, the main bedroom captures the essence of the luxurious polo lifestyle and gives it a true South African flavor with local art and craft. The design analysis of the space and its users' need for effortless transitioning as they get dressed ensures ergonomic execution with floating units comprising open and closed storage that incorporates durable season stone. Points, lines, planes and volumes are some of the morphing elements repeatedly played with whilst the Plascon color distance storm transitions from the bedroom to dressing room to create a sense of flow. Beautiful, beautiful bedrooms we're seeing in our master bedrooms today. Everyone's really stepping up the plate, so I can kind of kill that tension now, John. Now you may judge his bedroom. <laughs> yeah, look, I think, I think uh, what I liked the most about the bedroom, I think, was your, your attention to detail once again, I think, you know, kind of, you know, really made the bedroom stand out. Uh, the wardrobe for me, I loved the little touches of Caesar stone that were actually in the, in the cupboard. That was an unusual, um, you know, application for that material, which I thought was amazing. Mm. Uh, the fielded panelling behind the bed, I definitely gave it a, a sense of grandeur. You know, I think at the Polo Estate, it definitely needed, you know, that, that luxury feel. Um, the colour palettes, the, you know, everything about it I thought was, you know, really, really nice. And I think all the, as I said, attention to detail was the winning factor yeah. for me. Nice. So what did you give him for that good feedback? 7.5. A 7.5. Slightly higher than Minente. Simon, over to you. Yeah, I mean, Rudolph, you've been consistently strong uh, so far in the competition. I think the expectations are perhaps a little bit higher as a result. Uh, I liked your room. I really thought it was an excellent use of, of uh, colour, as you, as you mentioned, and materials. Uh, particularly liked that James Mudge desk as he came in. I thought that was beautiful, a nicely chosen piece. The wardrobe, a uh, very interesting conversation. You know, we had a lot of back and forth about this back at the office and, and online. Uh, open wardrobes versus closed wardrobes. And I know there's a trend towards these open wardrobes, but I think South Africa is still catching on. Uh, mm -hmm. And a lot, of, uh, a lot of concern about how that would play with the bathroom and perhaps moisture getting into the cupboard, messy cupboard. I mean, certainly my cupboard is not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I concur. Yeah, no <laughs> painting. So uh, I, that was one concern that we had. Would have been great if perhaps there was some smoky glass or something as, as doors on that would have really set it off. But the use of materials, excellent. Use of colour, great. Sure, nice. And what was the score for that? Scored it down a little bit for the practicality of the wardrobe. Um, but overall, six and a half. A six and a half. Still not too bad. He can catch up. All over to you, Anne. Okay. Well, I loved your use of colour. I thought that Distance Storm colour worked perfectly matching to the, the original water colour, which was also a beautiful addition to that room. And of course, the panelling is so on trend at the moment, and your repetition of form, I love that. Um, you also had great textures, and I loved that you used um, handmade items which gave it personality and texture and really elevated that whole room. Um, I love the closets. I think I really like that open feel, especially in Durban. It's nice to have that open and feeling where I stay. So, um, and I thought it had lovely flow through to the bathroom. So, I really thought it was a great room and I scored you 7.5. 7.5. That makes him up to 21 and a half. Minentle is 22 and a half. So, coming in in second place to Minentle today, which means that officially, unless what happens with, uh, goes on here with Joanne, we might have a new winner in our loft today. So, let's move on to our third contest. And let's take a look at Joanne had planned and designed for her master bedroom. My vision is to design a lifestyle without unnecessary clutter to exhibit the beauty of the space. The main bedroom is a space for relaxation. All the resting spaces in this apartment are planned to reflect a pool space, therefore the colour and texture choices are neutral and calm. The necessary items in this bedroom space are well designed and are very high quality. The chosen colours make the space seem bigger and are classic colours that will never go out of style. I incorporate interesting details into all my spaces and in this particular space, the dark trusses and storage headboard with copper detail are my creative surprises. She's not even watching the screen, <laughs> Joanne is that nervous? Our final <laughs> contestant, Minente is sitting on 22 and a half. Uh, we've got Rudolph sitting on 21 and a half. It's all up to Joanne's scores today. So let's take a look at what our judges thought. John, over to you. Um, I think, you know, again, uh, you know, the, the contemporary minimalistic feel that you went for, uh, which tied in well with the bathroom. Um, I felt, you know, on the positive side, um, I definitely liked, you know, the calmness of the room. It definitely had a nice calm feel and the fresh, the freshness of the white uh, offset with the natural wood colours, I think were very, very nice. Um, the, the, the downside for me was again, I think it was a similar comment to what I said last week, was that there's just that luxury feeling that I think is just not there. And, um, you know, for example, and I'll give you a good example, the, the, the bedroom cupboard, um, you know, although I think it's quite on trend and kind of, you know, 
quite or a town vibe, I should say. You know, it's got that edgy sort of city feel. Um, I think for you know a polo state at Valdivie for me was just not you know where the other two cupboards were. There was definitely that luxury feel that was missing. So okay. so that was what I think what what scored you down on my side. All right. So what did you give her? I scored her a six and a half. Six and a half. Still not too bad compared to your other scores that you've given so far. So there's a chance to catch up here, Simon. Jeune, brilliant dream. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I think particularly the alcove above the bed, that was clever thinking. Mm. That's a fixture that's permanent. It really draws your eye to the bed as opposed to the aircon unit perhaps further up the wall. Uh, the wardrobe, I did feel let you down. You know, those rough edges and just the finish just wasn't luxury as John said. Uh, standing mirror caught my attention. I really enjoyed the smokiness of the mirror, the mass of it, the size of it, so I thought that was excellent. And that little touch of bringing the colour from the window frames into the roof beams, I thought that was that really appealed to me. So uh, I marked you a 7.5. 7.5, wow. And I always knew when we went in to visit that room, you and I had this conversation that Simon would definitely say something about the stand-up mirror. So I'm glad you saw it and marked him on it. All right, so we've just got one more judge to hear from, but before we get to the final score for Joanae, our winner for the bathroom challenge, Rudolph, was rewarded with a day on the a fairway where he got to own a private golfing lesson. Let's check it out. So my award for the bathroom challenge is a golf lesson, and I'm quite nervous, but I'm also really excited but I think it's better that I take some tips from the professionals before my lesson starts with the coach. The body that I represent is called the PGA. So in your case, remember the posture being the P, the G would be the grip, and then obviously the A is where we aiming. So it's a nice, nice, easy way just to not forget everything you've, you've learned in the lesson. And then lastly, the golden rule of how the ball gets up into the air, if we can get that descending blow, let the loft of the club get the ball up into the air, don't be scared to hit down into the ball, don't be scared to hit that tee, tee out of the ground. If it's nice and relaxed, we can actually go give it a swing now. Are you guys ready? Nothing can be as hard as choosing Pascon colors, so here it goes. Oh, whoa! Oh, there it goes. What a shot. Oh. Fantastic, well done, proud of you. Well, I will definitely be spending more time here at the Bull Valley Driving Range, thank you. Oh, what a good shot. This was really a great day. It just shows you that a little bit of technique can really get you a long way. And it's definitely a sport I would consider taking up. It's a wonderful um, experience being here and looking at the beautiful scenery around here and um, swinging some iron. The only sport I think in the world that's going to take me forever to get used to. How was the whole experience? It was wonderful. It was really great. Um, like I say, it's a healthy, healthy body, healthy mind. Okay, cool. So you've been watching the game that's been going on at the moment. I think people are playing golf now. Isn't there a big tournament happening or something? Yeah, sure. We'll have to get to know these things, I'm sure. So it looked like an incredible experience. It's the rewards of winning each challenge. There is a reason why these challenges are so important, and not only for the end of the competition, but as well for these cool rewards that they do get. So we've judged both of our contestants, Minentle and Rudolf. Joanne is our final contestant. Contestant. We've heard from two of our judges and we only need to hear from our third. Currently you're sitting on 14 points. To win, you need to get 22 and a half points in total. So it really is all up to Anne's comments. No pressure, Anne. Okay. First your feedback. Okay. Well, you designed a minimalist room that wasn't dull or boring at all. <laughs> I thought you did a beautiful job. Your spatial planning was excellent. I absolutely loved that al alcove. It was such a clever idea. And all the little items you put in there were so clever and interesting and gave personality to the room. I was so happy to see you introduced other natural colors like the gray green of the bedding. Um, it, was, it was really a beautifully designed room. I didn't feel it was boring at all and just goes you know when I talk about color it doesn't have to be bright colors you've going to show you've shown how natural soft colors really work well so I scored you it needs a to be anything seven. a seven all right so that is brings you to 21 points in total just underneath Minentle uh, that makes Minentle our winner for today in our master bedroom challenge congratulations Minentle thank you, thank you. how are you feeling <laughs> after all of the stress man we've been under so much stress um I'm feeling very 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 happy I'm looking forward to seeing what the prize is <laughs> <laughs> I should, you should be looking forward to seeing how much work you still have to put into the next the next room that we're going to give you yeah, your challenge on but take a break enjoy your, your bit of a rest and enjoy the challenge congratulations 
congratulations, my friend. I'm really proud of you. I remember when I walked into that room, I said, now this is your name. It is Claire, man. Really, <laughs> really you. good work that you did there. Thank so you. we have our judge's favorite for the master bedroom. After the break, we find out what you, the viewer at home, decided. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. It's really good to have you with us on the show today as we kick off a brand new week. It's time for Winner Home on Afternoon Express. And before the break, our Winner Home judges gave their verdicts and it was decided that the winner of the master bedroom, drum roll please, the challenge is me Nentle. So remember that at home, you get the chance to cast your vote as well on privateproperty.co.za. And the design contestant with the most viewer votes at the end of Winner Home on Afternoon Express will win a cash prize of 50,000 Rand. So it's time for us now today to reveal the results of the master bedroom votes, well, the bathroom votes to be uh, exact, sorry. Uh, Minentle and Team L Decoration got 29% of the votes. Rudolph and Team Real Estate got 33% of the votes, slightly higher than Minentle. And Joanne with Team VZ are the winners with 38% of the votes. Yay! Congratulations, I'm very, very proud of you. Because you were so upset about hearing again another challenge that you hadn't won. Feeling a bit better? Uh, much better. Okay, so continue to get the viewers. 50,000 Rand, you and I can go on a holiday. Yay. We can have some fun. <laughs> Congratulations also to uh, Merlene Sharma. By voting for your favorite bathroom, you have won paint from Plascon to the value of 5,000 Rand. It's as simple as that. Enter. Remember that you can also still vote for your favorite master bedroom until this coming Thursday. The votes uh, as currently standing are Al Decoration on 22%, Team Real Estate on 36%, and Team VZ on 42%, which is great news. So don't leave it too late. Cast your vote now, and here's how. It's not called Winner Home for nothing. You, the viewer, can win one of the three completed apartments at the Valdivia Estate, valued at over 3 million rand, by voting for your favorite design contestant's master bedroom on privateproperty.co.za. Winner Home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. So make sure you get those votes in as soon as possible. Remember, they could win 50,000 Rand in cash. It's amazing. And simply by voting for your favorite uh, different room in the house, you also stand a chance to win the 3 million Rand home, which is amazing. Guys, I need your comments because we haven't actually got a chance to chat about how you're feeling. The tension is now done. Rudolf, first challenge you didn't win. Yeah, well, it's okay. It's fine. Like I said, I've put some more pressure on myself, but we'll we'll just have to move on and see what we can do with the race. If okay. you want to practice, you're more than welcome to come to my house. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just invite me over, Judy. I'll come around. For having this chatty <laughs> after the show. Who do you think is the competition? Because on the last two challenges, you've had it quite easy. I mean, you've won quite clearly in, in the two different challenges that we had previously. Mm. Um, do you feel under pressure or are you still feeling quite comfortable? Yeah, like I say, it, it's really difficult to choose between these two because there are some elements that, in both of these designs that I really like myself mm. um, and that I wish I'd thought of myself but um, uh, they're both competitions so. sure yeah I mean Nintendo, your first win you were very nervous my friend <laughs> and you're always very chill the first time I've seen you be like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But that dressing room was out when I saw it. I was like, oh, yeah. Minetla is also coming to visit me. <laughs> How do you feel, dude? Um, I feel great, obviously. Um, but I also understand um, the pressure that comes with winning a challenge. Um, in regards to the viewers, I feel like I need to bump that, the, the votes up. I'm not happy Are with that. Are you taking bribes? I'm joking. <laughs> don't. We don't do that on the show. We do not do that on the show. And usually. I do. <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm so happy. The viewers are loving my, sh my stuff, so I'm so happy about that. Great. Good to hear. As long as they like my stuff, I'm happy. Awesome. Yay! Now, talking about prizes, today we are actually giving away a brand new Nutribullet Pro oh. 900. It's a really good one, like the one we've got. So, SMS the keyword Nutribullet, your name and city, to 33728. So, SMS has cost 1 Rand 50 each. T's and C's apply and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. And enter now, it'll increase your chances of winning. Yeah. Well, awesome. I don't really know that, <laughs> but I, you'll win. I think, actually, because you won the competition and this challenge, we should put you to the test and see how well you've got it food, I guess. Is that a thing? Yeah, notice that we didn't invite the judges for dinner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for, for everyone. How do you even dish this up? I guess, like, sort of just try it out. Take a little... Oh, that outside. was me that set the table and I, I kind of... <laughs> <laughs> Should we get us a nice food? Yay! Now we know why I'm not married. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. Imagine dinner has been in his soup with a fork. It's like, okay, well, yay, thanks. I can't wait. That happens sure. to me all the time. Sure. What a mixed match of a show we've had today. I mean, we've we helped our bodies and our minds. We looked at really beautiful homes. We've spoken about education. I feel like I'm ready to start a whole family now. We've got the home, we've got the nutrition and the family. And Don't get excited. You and I will never start a family. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't miss out on the Afternoon Express tomorrow. We're taking a very, we're talking about a, actually a very, very interesting mm. issue. The difficulty is faced by um, a woman in the modern workplace. So, I mean, can you tell what I've got to put up with? <laughs> so, all you need to do is head over to our Facebook page right now and answer some of our questions for tomorrow's show. So, we want to know what is the biggest challenge faced by women in the modern workplace? So, your comments could be featured live on the show tomorrow. Please don't say bad puns because then I'm in trouble. Uh, is, that, is that the biggest challenge? <laughs> okay, so what do you think it. of the... Um, I mean, I have to taste this because yeah. I made it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested to know. This mash looks amazing. I'm really interested to know about that, like, the celery Celeriac. Root. Celeriac. It's my first I know, how amazing. It tastes a lot like celery as well. Mm. Yeah, it's, but it's really good. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And how good was this chicken? Well, this gravy's delicious. I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And during the show, I left it simmering a lot more. Yeah. Than... Well, when I say I, <laughs> the chef <Yeah>. did it. <laughs> well, Design Contestant, thanks so much for all the hard work. Continue to put in that hard effort in. Enjoy your, your, your challenge win. I'd like to see what it is a little bit later on in Afternoon Express. Have a good night. Happy eating South Africa. And we'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Yummy. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we take a look at the difficulties women face in the modern workplace, including harassment and a phenomenon called Queen Bee Syndrome. And for Winner Home on Afternoon Express, our design contestants get briefed on their next challenge. The hottest address on TV is Winner Home on Afternoon Express, proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Another feel-good production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means the world to us. Join the Afternoon Express family by subscribing to our channel right here. And we'll keep you up to date with all our recipes and, of course, our fabulous episodes. Also, feel free to leave a comment and share this video. We do love it when you express yourself.